the next stanza is stanza four. So in this stanza four, he says, those who prepare green wars, wars with the gas, uh, wars with fire, victory with no survivors, would put on clean clothes and walk about with their brothers in the shade doing nothing. So this is the uh, fourth stanza. And let us see what he is saying here now. So while we are quiet and silent, what should we do? That is what he is saying here. What should we retros uh, sorry, introspect? What should we think about? That is what he is saying here. So he says, the people who exploit the green wealth of nature by deforestation or mining or fishing in the deep seas and the soldiers who use weapons to kill fellow human beings need some time to introspect into the consequences of their actions. So this is very important. Uh, so when he says, those who prepare green wars, uh, what does he mean by green wars? Green wars means exploitation of nature, war against nature, or war against environment, environmental destruction. So that is what he is talking about here. The people who exploit the green wealth of nature. How? If we take some examples by deforestation, uh, excess of mining, fishing in the deep seas. In this way, we exploit the nature. We destroy our environment. So that is what he meant by saying those who prepare green wars. So green wars here refer to the environmental destruction or exploitation of nature and environment. So he is talking about those people, those people who are exploiting the nature. Those people here would mean the whole human race, all of us who are in certain ways exploiting the nature and destroying our own environment. What we should do is we should stop all these activities for a while and think about the consequences of all these uh, destruction in our lives as well as in the nature. Okay, and not only that, he talks about the real soldiers, the battle soldiers who fight battles. So he says wars with gas, wars with fire. So uh, different types of uh, wars are fought by human beings by using different weapons. Uh, very destructive weapons, for example, wars with gas, use of chemicals, uh, nowadays, uh, people even fear about using um, bio-warfare, chemical wars, which uh, produce lots of gases that uh, damage the whole environment, atmosphere, and wars with fire would uh, refer to the nuclear wars, uh, which produces so much heat and again causes so much destruction. Okay, so what is the result of all these wars, whether it is a, an actual war or uh, the destruction of uh, environment or nature, war against uh, environment, what is the consequence? The consequence is that it is a victory with no survivors. Okay, so this is a very sad uh, situation. Uh, in a war, there is no winners. We would say, even, even if some nations claim that they have won a battle or won a, a war, it is just hypocrisy because there is no victory in a war. Both the uh, nations or warring groups lose so much in the war. So that means there is no winner. So in the same way, uh, Naruto also says that this is a war with no survivors. So it is like a victory. Sorry, it is like a victory with no survivor to celebrate the uh, victory. 
So that is a sad situation. So now what you do, okay, is victory with no survivors would put on clean clothes and walk about with their brothers in the shade doing nothing, okay? So this is what he says. Fellow human beings need some time to introspect into the consequences of their actions. They are merely doing their job or following orders. So instead of for, uh, merely only following instructions and doing their jobs, now these people need to uh, sit silent and motionless and think deeply about the consequences. Consequences means the result of their actions, whether their actions are for the betterment of humanity and environment or it is for the destruction of the humanity and environment. We need to think about that, okay, the pros and cons. And then only we need to act accordingly. So this is a very powerful message, okay. So he wants them to put on new clothes. Put on new clothes is again uh, a metaphor, okay. So uh, the Clothes, new clothes that we should wear is uh, compared to um, the peace that we will try to achieve by thinking about the consequences of our actions, okay? So he wants them to put on new clothes that is to adopt a new approach towards life and to realize that killing so many people is not a victory. So that is talking about actual war. So in the actual war, wars, both the warring groups will kill each other. So even if one side says, claims that that has won the battle, that site is also going to lose so many people and there is no victory in losing so many lives. In the same way, uh, in the process of doing so many uh, activities in our lives, we destroy so much in our nature. Again, that is going to have a very adverse effect in our uh, life, okay? So that means he wants them to put on new clothes, means to uh, adopt, use a new approach towards all these destructive behaviors of the human beings. This only we can achieve if we introspect, if we analyze our own actions and their consequences. Okay, he wants all of us to be united as one. How? By considering our uh, enemies as our brothers. Why? Because we all share the same feelings of desiring happiness and avoiding unhappiness, suffering. So in that way, we are all the same. Uh, if we think about that, then we will not have this hatred and enmity against anybody else. We will form the sense of brotherhood. And if there is a sense of brotherhood, then there will be peace and uh, harmony in our lives. Okay? He is promoting brotherhood, peace and unity. So that is what he wants us to do by remaining silent and motionless. In, this, in that silence and motionless, we will think about all our activities and the consequences of these activities. And we will realize that major part of our activities lead to uh, suffering because these uh, lead to so much destruction, death, and all these lead to suffering for the self as well as the others. So that is what he wants us to do in that moment of silence. So we are uh, introspecting, analyzing, soul searching, okay, heart searching into our selves. Mm -hmm. He does not want us to stop our works, but to take some time and analyze the result of our deeds. So again, this is important. He is not advising us to completely stop the works that we are doing, okay? What he wants us to do is uh, stop, um, pause, okay? Those uh, works for a time being and analyze, examine, whether our deeds, actions are productive or destructive, good or bad. 
Okay, then in stanza five, if we do that, what will happen? Okay, what I want should not be confused with total inactivity. Life is what it is about. I want no truck with death. Again, this stanza is important. So he says mm, that we should not confuse his advice here. So he is making a clarification. He is clarifying something. What is he clarifying? The poet makes a clarification that though he is advising the need for silence, his advice should not be confused with total inactivity. So again, this is important, okay? So he clarifies that even though he advises us to sit silent and motionless, he is not uh, advising us to uh, completely give up all the activities or become inactive. Inactive means idle, doing nothing. Okay? Idle means doing nothing. He doesn't want us to uh, remain idle and do nothing. Uh, uh, for example, if there is some kind of, um, you can say, injustice, if we remain silent, then that is wrong. He doesn't want us, us to do that. We need to stand against injustice. But how? Okay, that is also important. His advice should not be confused with total inactivity. Okay, total inactivity means uh, complete idleness, doing nothing at all. If we do not do anything, then Again, that is a mistake. He does not want any association with death. Again, this is important. Uh, he says, I want no truck with death. Okay, no truck with death means uh, not having any association with death. So his idleness, uh, sorry, stillness and quietness, his silent, moment of silence, Silence should not be confused with or associated with death. Because you know, when, uh, when a person dies, then he completely becomes inactive. He is not able to do anything, say anything, even the feeling is gone, even the thinking process is gone. He doesn't want us to uh, be like that death, okay? He does not want us to associate with death. Even if we are physically, uh, still motionless and we have uh, stopped speaking but our mind is still alert and the thinking process the analytical mind is still walking so that is what he wants he does not want that silence to be associated with death i want no truck with death no truck with death means that silence the moment of silence should not be associated with death okay so he is advising us against total inactivity total idleness as I said before, if there is injustice in the world, then we should stand against it. He does not advise us to keep silent. Okay? He says life is meant to be lived. Life is what it is about. So he says life is meant to be lived. Okay? How? By using our mind to analyze our actions and analyze and see what is the right and the correct course of action that we should take to achieve some um, success. That success also should be uh, on the basis of peace and harmony for the self as well as the others. Even in the fight against injustice, uh, sometimes we say we are fighting for injustice, but in the same way we are um, being unjust to others. That is also wrong. Why? Because we have not spent time to analyze what is the right cause of our action. So that is what he says. In life, we need to do these activities, actions that we are usually doing, but with the uh, correct line and by analyzing the consequences of what we are doing. So this stanza also is important because he here makes this uh, clarification where he is saying that he is not asking us to remain idle 
and completely give up our actions and speech, but spend our time to correctly judge our own actions and their consequences before we uh, enact them. Okay, stanza six says, if we were not so single-minded about giving our lives moving and for once could do nothing, perhaps a huge silence might interrupt the sadness of never understanding ourselves and of threatening ourselves with death. Again, this is in a way prophetic. It's like a prophecy, prediction, okay? Uh, again, a powerful stanza let's see what he says okay the poet further advises that the people should stop being self-centered and selfish so all the problems miseries uh, that we are facing nowadays and we have faced long time ago and we will continue to face in our life is all because of the um, thought of us being selfish, our selfish nature and self-centeredness. As I have talked about this in the previous, uh, in one of the previous stanzas, we are being very selfish and self-centered. Uh, we always think about I and my most of the time, and we never think about we or us as a whole. So because of that, we uh, cause so much suffering for the self as well as others. So he is talking about this. Advices that the people should stop being self-centered and selfish. Okay, for a moment, what should they do is they should not think of keeping their lives moving meeting their ends of fulfilling their duties. Okay, for a short time, stop about all the usual activities of fulfilling one's own ends, meeting their own duties, fulfilling their own duties and meeting their ends. Okay, and think about what are the consequences of our actions on others. Okay, the huge silence which will arise from such a moment will only serve to help the people, okay? So in that silence, we will learn that all the actions that we are doing in our lives cause so much uh, misery, suffering, destruction of the nature. And after realizing this, what we will learn is that we are actually not fulfilling anything in our life. So this silence will arise from such a moment will only serve to help the other people. Now we will start thinking from a larger perspective. We as a whole, okay? One's own happiness relies on the happiness of the others. So if we work for the happiness of um, Others automatically, I or me will also come into that. In that way, it will meet the both, both the ends. That means we will also be happy and peaceful and others will also be happy and peaceful. And even if we talk about the uh, environment or our uh, nature, if we are, as I said before, in harmony with nature, then we will also be at harmony. So it will help them introspect and overcome their, their sadness of failing to understand, to, uh, sorry, failing to understand themselves. So in this short moment of silence, if we introspect, then it will help us to overcome the sadness. Sadness of what? Sadness of failing to understand themselves. Okay, then we will realize that we have failed to understand ourselves. How? By only thinking about the self, we are causing more suffering to the self as well as the others. So with this introspection, we will realize that we have actually failed to understand ourselves. And in this moment of introspection, we will realize 
that uh, the truth that we have failed to understand ourselves and we will set, feel sad and this introspection will help us to overcome that sadness. Let us look back to that mm, stanza here, okay? Here he says, and for once could do nothing, perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness of never understanding ourselves. Here, this, this is what he says. So in the present hustle and bustle of our lives, we have failed to understand our own nature. We have uh, failed to understand what is actually our desire. Desire. The actual desire is peace and happiness, not only for the self, but for the others as well. But in this haste, we have failed to understand that. Okay, and that has threatened ourselves to death and of threatening ourselves with death. So, in that failure to understand our actual need, uh, what we are doing is we are threatening ourselves to death, okay? So if we move, so uh, it says it will help them introspect and overcome their sadness of failing to understand. People have been threatening themselves with death by their in activities. Okay, so in that silence, in that silent moment of introspection, as I said, we will realize that we have been actually threatening our own security, our own lives, by our own activities. We are leading ourselves towards death. And we will realize that only if we spend time in a calm state of mind and try to understand the nature of our actions and their consequences. Okay. This moments of a moment of silence will give them time to understand themselves better. As I said, this silent moment will give us an opportunity, give us a great moment, chance to analyze ourselves and understand ourselves better. And if we try to analyze and understand our own true nature, our human nature, then we will realize that our true human nature is not at all destructive, not at all violent. It's very calm, peaceful, and productive. Okay? That productive uh, nature should lead to proactive uh, actions, which will uh, make our world make our lives far more harmonious, peaceful, and uh, happy. That can be only achieved if we spend a little time from our busy um, life to analyze our true human nature. Okay, last answer says, perhaps the earth can teach us as when, we, uh, when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive. Now I'll count up to 12 and you keep quiet uh, and I will go. So here uh, he is giving us the example of Mother Earth. Okay, Earth that sustains us is often thought of as the greatest teacher. So what he is saying is we can learn so much from our Mother Earth. Okay, so what are the things that we can learn from our mother earth? Okay, when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive. So this is the teaching that mother earth gives us. The poet feels that the earth can enlighten us and guide us in this process of keeping quiet. So in that moment of keeping quiet, if we think about earth, we take the example of our earth, then we will realize the importance of that quiet moment. The mother earth will enlighten us and guide us in that thinking process. Okay. Again, he takes the example of a seed in our nature. He wants us to observe that there is some activity under apparent stillness. Okay, here, as, as when everything seemed dead and later proves to be alive. We are talking about these two lines, okay? 
So he says, uh, in nature, many of the things become inactive or remain in inactive for some time. Like he is advising us to become inactive for a short while. Okay, so even in our nature, Earth, the seeds remain dormant and inactive during the winter. And in that uh, state, the seed looks like dead. But uh, when the weather becomes warm in the springtime, the seed again gains activity and it starts germinating and it grows into huge fruit bearing trees. So this example teaches us how it is important for us to remain silent and motionless for a time being, analyze our actions and their consequences, and then start uh, doing something which will be productive like this seed or that tree which grew out of that seed. Okay, so that is what he is talking, a beautiful example. Okay. For instance, for example, a seed appears to be dead during the winter because it is in its domain state. And not only about uh, this seed, there are also animals who hibernate during the winter and looks like they are dead because we cannot see them in the winter time. But uh, when the spring of the summer comes, these wake up from their hibernation. They come out of their hibernation and again they are active. So, like that, here he says, a seed appears to be dead during the winter, but huge fruit bearing trees are born from such seeds lying dead here and there, below the seed. Okay? So, that is what we need to do. We also need to spend a time of inactivity, stillness, and silence. In that silent moment, our minds will be active and analyzing and judging our own actions and their consequences so that the product will be of more use for the self as well as the others. Okay, now he wants us to keep quiet while he is counting to 12, after which he will leave. Then he says, Mm, that he is leaving. Why? Because now he has given us the advice to count and uh, do self-analysis. Okay, so that is why he wants us to keep quiet and count to 12 and he will leave. Okay, so that is the end of this powerful poem and you can practice your writing with these five questions. Thank you.